Hi, I'm Maria, and this is the Agile State of Mind. Welcome, and welcome to this new series of some quick tutorials and how-tos on how to make our lives easier. And let's start with the retrospectives. Who wouldn't like to have an automated retrospective? Everybody, right? If you are like me and you spend so much time preparing the retrospectives, you know what I'm talking about. That's true, even though we use the typical three, four templates over and over again. And why we do this, we know we need to prepare some structure because if there is no structure on the meeting, only the loudest team members voice their opinions and we get into a chaos. People speak, people talk over each other, but no actions are taken. We feel like yet another unproductive meeting. In this video, I would like to help not only Scrum Masters and Agile Coaches, but also all the other roles and team members that want to improve something. The tech leads, uh, product managers, engineering managers, and I tell you, Parable, the tool I just discovered, will help you so much. And one more thing before we go, I just wanted to highlight how important it is to give this empowerment to the team so they know they can change processes that don't work for them. I recently read on the Pragmatic Engineer's blog and he highlighted that the teams with no autonomy to change a failing project management approach recorded low satisfaction at their job. We all want people to have high satisfaction, right? And we want them to be able to have a say in how they will do it. That's the empowerment we want to give to the team. So today, I'm going to show you Parable, a tool I just discovered, and it automates the whole experience of a retrospective. All you need to do is just click Next. Magic, right? So let's get to it. All right, so let me share the screen and show you how to get to the next level of retrospecting. Okay, so as you see, we are at parable.co. This is the tool that I was talking about. In the tool, you can do the retrospective with the templates, but you can run estimation poker and have team check-ins. Today, we'll explore the retrospectives. This is the dashboard. The tool is free for two teams. You can have an unlimited meetings, as far as I know. Here, you have Maria Check's team and Maria Check's org. If I click on it, I can uh, change the name as I prefer. So this is your dashboard. What you can do here, you can start a meeting. Then you can see the timeline. After you have some meetings, you will see the timeline and the tasks. Unlike other tools, those actions that you take on the retrospective, they get recorded here. And once they're done, they're done. But until they're done, you will see them. So let's go ahead and start our retrospective. You define what kind of meeting you want. As I said, there are three different ones. We want a retro meeting. You have here the team. Choose a template. So we can choose different templates that they already have. You can create your own template. We want want to make this easy. So we're going to take start, stop, continue. I want to focus the team on the daily meetings and think about what they want to start doing, what we want to stop doing and what we want to continue doing because it's valuable for the whole team. Then you click on use the template. You can include or exclude icebreaker. I will include it and I will let you know in a moment why. Right now we are just going to hit go. How do we invite the team? As you see here, we have the button to invite team. What we do, we just copy the link. And as you see, I shared it with my team member, which is Maria, and she directly appeared here. What I like to do is to share the link ahead of the meeting, for example, in the morning of the same day, so the team can start adding the reflections ahead of meeting. You can also add the emails here. I avoid manual work, as you see here. We have many. We start with an icebreaker, then we have the reflect, so the, the actual retro. We group the topics, we vote, and then we discuss everything on one click. So the icebreaker, I really recommend using this icebreaker. It's really cool. It's just one question to all of the meeting participants. As you see here, what's an unusual skill you'd love to master. If you don't like the question, you can refresh it. You can also customize your question. I really like this because if you remember from my retrospective structure meeting, if we stra start the meeting with everyone having to say at least one word, we are more likely to have 
greater participation in the meeting later on. That's why it's so important. And it's also like team building for the team. If I now click next, the next person appears. Once we did icebreaker, we move on and hit the reflect part. So now you ask everybody to start writing their notes. I'm sharing the screen so you will be seeing what I write. As a facilitator, I have here the timer and I can hit next or end the meeting. Let's see what the team members see. As a participant, I, I see only tips. And once I, I wrote something, I can state that I'm ready. Once a sticky note has been added, it's white. Once it's being written, it is different in colors. This way you can also see if the team members are ready or that they are still in progress of writing notes. It's really handy. So that is the team member view. And we are back at our view. You can also set up the timer. As you see here, you can choose how many minutes we want to give the team. I try to give no more than five minutes at the beginning if i see that people still write something i prolong it you can also just highlight one of the columns and set the timer for the given column so let's write a few notes and see how that works and now since we have a few topics we can hit next you can either read through all of them or you can have everybody read on their own you set the timer for that and ask people to group the topics. Imagine we have the same kind of topics. We just put one over the other. This also creates a theme, side conversations. And yeah, that's it. Once we are done with the grouping, we hit next and we are at the voting. You have the settings. You can give the votes per participants. I don't like to give too many votes because then it's like you can vote on everything and votes per topic. I actually let people vote on the same topic three times if they think it is the topic we must talk about. It multiplies the votes by the users. So you see how many votes were spent. For example, if I start, you see voting, the number goes down and I know when we are done voting. And now I will vote on that other participant, as you see. So once we get to zero, we are done. One important thing, if you voted by mistake, the thumbs down is not like, I don't vote for this. It's just to unvote your vote. <laughs> okay, and let's move on. So now this is what it looks like when we start the discussion. So I would say that for the first part, up until discussion, we should spend no more than, let's say, 25 minutes of an hour meeting. Let's say we have five minutes per topic. It already is ordered by votes. For example, you think collaboration is more important or we already spoke about the board. So you can change it here and you start talking about the topic. So we have side conversations. You can also use the chat in here to record any conversations you are having. So those are conversations and you can also add emojis to them, which is nice. Once you discussed, you came up with an action, you can just copy the comment and add it as a task. So now you have to add it here and you can assign it to whoever you think. And that's it. You have an action. Then you hit on next. As you see, this one has been already struck through and we have topics and we start going about this one. Sometimes you can just skip part of it. We don't have time. We will not talk about all of them. So then you go ahead and click on end meeting. And this is what it looks like. So now let's see what's the summary. You can go to the team dashboard, which we will do in a moment and export it to the CSV. Here we have the actions from the retro. When we go to the team, Team dashboard so you can always come check the actions that's basically it i hope this will help especially all those people that need to run the retrospectives and don't have time to prepare for them why not have something cute and nice and easy to use i hope you loved the tool just so as i did please ask me anything in the comments if you have any any questions about how to run the retros and that's it for today thanks for watching bye bye Thank you.